back to another episode of More Sewing with Michelle. I'm so glad you could join me here today because I've got one of my favorite types of quilts to make. And I've got a special tool to do it. So we are bringing in an item from Lori Holt from Be In My Bonnet and also Riley Blake. And this item is the Thimble Ruler. And we've got it in two different sizes. I've got so much to show you today, so let's get going on this episode of More Sewing with Michelle. So let me talk just a little bit about these particular thimble rulers. Um, they get their name by the shape, and we have the 10 inch and we also have the five inch and um, they are actually a tumbler block shape. Now, tumbler blocks became very, very popular back in the 1850s. And with that, they were used um, all over. And one of the things that they were so popular for is exactly one of the reasons why I love them so much too. So they were also called beggar quilts when they were finished. And the reason they called them beggar quilts was because oftentimes people would use their leftover fabrics. They would borrow fabrics from their friends. They would trade um, an actual cut out block with their friends and then they'd put them all together and make a quilt. And that's where they get the name beggar quilt. So it's just one of those things from history. Um, if you heard of a beggar quilt, um, it is often referred to the fact that um, they have swapped fabric, swapped patterns, swapped um, the different um, size cutout fabrics and used in each other's quilts. And I love that. I love the fact that we share our fabrics and stuff. And we need to do that maybe now, have a beggar quilt, um, you know, round robin, so to speak, and share blocks. So anyways, that was one of the fun things from history. Now, they were all the rage in the 1950s. 30s and 40s. And um, I think because of their simplistic shape and how they were put together, it's pretty easy to line these things up and you can get those angles, but it's not a super difficult block to make. Now, one of the reasons why I love this shape and this tumbler block quilt is because I love big, bold, fun fabrics. And with that, oftentimes, if I buy, um, if I'm at a quilt store and I fall in love with a fabric and I bring it home, and sometimes I don't want to cut it up into very small pieces to put together a quilt. So I often will save those pieces until I come up with something to make that I can really showcase that fabric and not have to cut it up to where you don't really see the overall um, image of the fabric. So with this 10 inch, you can see on the quilt in back of me, that's exactly what I did. Now let me hold up just so you can see. This is one of the fabrics left over from that quilt and you can see how big that is. Now I love that. So on the quilt in back of me, um, the fabric that I bought that I absolutely fell in love with was Tula Pinks and um, the flamingos here and then I have it in two different colorways, and I brought in some supporting fabric also from Tula Pink. Don't get me started on Tula Pink. I love her fabrics. Um, I'm always drawn to her images. She's an amazing artist. So if you haven't checked out Tula Pink, go ahead and do that. But with that, if I was to use the smaller size, the five inch, I would really lose some of the overall feel to that fabric. I would lose the foliage in the back. I wouldn't be able to get the full flamingo in there. So that's why I love this 10 inch um, tumbler or thimble um, ruler. Now on these rulers, they have a center line and they also have other lines where you can do some pretty fabulous designing. Um, you could have it be with strips, um, two and a half inch strips. So you can line those up so that you can really make some really unique and um, different looking quilts with just this one tumbler. Now, I also like that it has the center line. So you're able to justify the center and you know exactly where you're gonna line something up. So say my hand, I wanted directly in the center 
I can use this, know where it is so that I know where to cut. And that's pretty important if you're trying to fussy cut or if you're trying to get that image exactly in the middle to showcase whatever you want to show on that fabric, that's where these lines are pretty important. Now I have many other um, tumbler block rulers and believe you me, I love them and I use them often. This one I think is the only one I have that has those alignment marks. So it takes a basic ruler and it's up and up the ante to where now you have multiple things that you could do. You could have it be half one color, half another color, and then you have all of these segments where you can literally do two, four, six, eight different fabrics in one. So, but if you're like me and you want to use it to showcase fabrics that you fell in love with, it's perfect for a large print fabric. Now, on the smaller one, the five inch, we have a justification in the center and we also have a center line there. You can still do some pretty fabulous things. You can use four different fabrics um, and have it be scrappy, but you also have the capability of fussy cutting and getting the very center in your block. Now, don't let me forget here, one of the other most important things that I love about this ruler, and I think it's the only tumbler block or thimble block that um, has it. It has taken the little tips off of the corners where you line it up, and super important because that makes it super easy to line these up, and I'm going to be showing you that in just a little bit. So. Thimble Ruler by Lori Holt and Riley Blake. We have the five inch. We also have the 10 inch. They are going to be your best friend. I guarantee it. Now let me get on and set up my machine and I've got a demo for you. Okay, so I wanted to show you real close, up close. Thimble Ruler, you can see these lines here. And you know what, let me turn my quilter select mat on the other side that might help us to line things up. So you can see now we have these lines on the ruler and that helps us line it up. Now this one is the 10 inch one and we also have our little 5 inch which has those same registration lines. So one of the things that I wanted to show you is how easy it is then to create different looking blocks using just these two different rulers. So you can see you can line it up half and half. You can also go the other direction and using this line here you can simply line it up and then cut. And if you remember I said that those little notches are off so I'm going to go ahead cut that notch, cut this other notch, and then we'll do the final cut here. So you can see now, I've got this perfectly in half tumbler. So super fun, super easy. And then we also have, I've just sewn together some scraps. You can do the same thing on this one. Now look at this big ruler here. You can see I can line it up sideways there by that center line. I can turn it and line it up on this seam and have to where only a quarter of it, I could go to a half, I could go to three quarters the other way. There's so many different options that you have. And I'm gonna simply line it up there on the center, use it, and then I'm gonna cut. Using the wonderful rotary cutter from Quilter Select that I love so well. And then let me turn it. So I'm not contorting myself too much. Realign everything up and make my final cuts. And just like that, I've got like a half and half. So you can do these blocks either direction. And that's the beauty of having all these registration marks here on the ruler. Now I also want to show you other stuff that you can do. So you know how I don't like one trick ponies. So look at this. This is just some scraps that I've once again thrown together. Let me get my little five inch thimble ruler. And look now, look what I can do. I can line up those lines to where I have three different fabrics. I could switch it this way 
I could go to where it's longer down here. So lots of options again for that. And I'll go ahead. I think I like it better with the colored being the smaller. So let me turn it this way. Do my cutting. And then I'm going to turn it. So there's no right or wrong. It could be scrappy. Um, I love that about this. I love having, and I know I've shared with this before, having one ruler to make multiple different types of blocks. So there you go. That one's done too. And let me show you one more thing. So we had two, we had three, and now we're going for four. So look at this with four. So on this one, I'm going to grab my 10 inch again. And looky here, I can line it up, those registration marks, to where we make it four. I could bring it down and have it go there. I could, I think I could flip around. Yeah, I could flip it around. So there's so many different options. Once again, that's what I love. I think I'm going to go ahead and just do this. I think this would be fun to do a quilt with these different sizes of four fabrics. And keep in mind, depending upon what type of sashing and other items you add will really change the way your quilt looks. So let me turn it one more pivot to do these extra little cuts on this side and line it up again to make sure everything is perfect. And there we go. So with just my scrap fabrics, I've come up with some different designs that you can make super fast, super easy. So we have the 10 inch, and then we have the 10 inch with two fabrics. We have the five inch with two fabrics, and then we have the five inch with three fabrics. And that's just some of the things I did with my scraps here on the fly. Now let me get to an actual sewing demo to show you how easy it is to sew them together. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to take these simple blocks here, the thimble blocks, and sew them together. And keep in mind, those corners cut off, getting rid of those dog ears makes it so easy. So let me turn around here, and I've got the close-up camera, and I have, look at all this, I have all these leftover fabrics and blocks that I cut out. Now, I'm, you should know me by now, I won't let these go to waste, but I'm going to show you how, um, easy it is to sew these together. So let me get two different ones here and you'll see that they just line up here. And then to line up those corners, you're going to simply take that notched off side on each point to where they're together. And then I have on my machine here, I have it set it up with a quarter inch sewing with my foot with the flange on this particular machine. I'm going to drop let me slow down the speed so it doesn't bounce. Cut that. And look at this. Look how fun it is. Now let me add one more so you can see. Let me add some of this gingham. I love this fabric. So then uh, you can see that we have the angle this way and the angle that way. So you always know that the, the fatter side will go line up with the skinnier side. Once again, lining up those two sides, you can see the dog ears gone there and there. Put it in your machine. So, and once again, it's really just that simple. Now, I love that these blocks, I don't need a pencil, I don't need a ruler, I don't need anything to make these line up perfectly. And look at the bottom edges there. Look how perfect they are. So let me add one more. We'll add some of this dot fabric to the other side. And once again, whoops, taking the smaller end, lining up the other side and those corners. Let me bring it up real close so you can see. So since it's got that notch off, you line up that corner you line up that corner like so, put it in your machine.
and just like that, I've got four blocks together. Now, how simple and how fun is that? Now, this is with just the five inch block. So you can see all the different things that you can do with it um, based on the fabrics you use, if you design, if you do, you know, blue, red, blue, red. There's just so many things you can do. This is just a starting point. And these are of uh, the pieces that are of uh, a solid fabric. Keep in mind on that other demo where I showed you can take you know, two and three, and it bumps up that, that um, possibility as far as what you can do. Now, this is some leftover blocks that I had from the quilt in the background. So you can see they've lined up. Now, in order to get the ends, you're going to want a piece that's half, and that way you're going to have that, that basically able to line it up, and it'll be a solid line straight down. You can always go after and um, take your ruler and cut off extras, but I like to basically cut them in half and do it ahead of the game. So same thing, I'm going to line it up. And once again, this would be for the side of the quilt. Because this one's a little bit bigger, I'm making sure that everything stays in alignment. Following it down to the very end. Take this, cut it, and you will see now I have the side of the quilt that is completely lined up and perfect. And look at that tulip pink fabric. Oh my gosh, I so love it. So, how easy is that? You can decide, you know, how many you want across. On my large one, I had one, two, three, four, five, six across, and then I had two halves. And then on the small one that I'm going to show you in just a little bit, I had... A lot more but it you know like I said this set of these thimble rulers so much potential it's not like you're gonna have to buy them and make the same quilt over and over and over again um, no you can switch things up very easily and get dramatic results that look totally different here's the small one once again now let me show you these quilts full size that I have and show you how you can put a sashing in to change things up as well. So I know you're probably convinced by now how much these wonderful thimble rulers by Lori Holt and Riley Blake are going to change how you take um, the time to make just a simple quilt. So many options, so much potential with just these two. They come together in a kit and once again, we have the 5 inch and we have the 10 inch. So with that said, keep in mind all the potential. You can use one fabric. You can use two fabric. We have um, three fabrics. And then there's also the four fabrics. And that's just a starting point as far as what you can do with these rulers. So in order to pick up the set of the thimble block rulers, you're going to go to moors-sew.com or you can click on the link in the description go to the more sewing with michelle landing page and you can find them and everything else that i've shown on all the episodes of more sewing with michelle remember moors-sew.com so you know how to cut them you know how to pick fabrics you know why i love these thimble blocks um, as far as using fabrics, scrap fabrics, focal fabrics with that 10 inch one. Oh my golly, so cool. But if you look at the quilt in back of me, that one, I did eight rows and I added just a small little sashing of two inches in between. Six and a half on six across, I should say, and then two halves on the end is how I made it. So that way you can know if you want to try to reproduce that, how many you can go and how big it is. So if you add sashing, if you add borders in between, I've just touched on the possibilities as far as how you can change these quilts up. And there's so much more that you can do too. Now I wanted to show you real quick the little um, red, white, and blue one, the patriotic quilt that I made. Let me show you this. This was done completely scrappy, 
and I just basically grabbed some patriotic fabrics as well as some tone on tones and um, red and blues. I used actually this um, border fabric and some of the ones in here were actually from a panel and I thought, you know what, those work too. So just using what I had, I came up with this great patriotic quilt. Now on this one, there are eight, I mean, excuse me, 11 different rows and so much fun. So you can use up some of your individual pieces, make a perfect 4th of July quilt, basically limitless what you can do with it. On this one, I've added a wider border. So this is just like I said, building blocks with these symbol blocks as far as quilts that you can make. Have fun, be creative. Um, I, it's one of the things that I love to do is to make my own pattern, make my own quilt, so to speak, from start to finish. And that way there's no one else out there that has a quilt just like me. So that kind of covers it for this episode of More Sewing with Michelle. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to join me. And I look forward to seeing you on the next More Sewing with Michelle. Until then, bye-bye.